All right, so I want to talk about the spiky shield build for Nubarak, and honestly, I have a feeling this is going to get nerfed soon. Um, Nubarak's win rate has been incredibly high lately, and uh, it's just one of those things that we need to be worried about. This particular game is a high-ranked game. We're going against a couple Grandmaster players, and it is in Storm League. We've got a couple Grandmasters on our team. Pretty straightforward. The big thing that I want to share is that this build has a few things going for it and a few reasons why you're going to want to take this over some of the beetle builds that I talked about earlier. Uh, the beetle build in, in particular is taking Legion at 1 and then going E talents pretty much the rest of the way. Uh, this particular build is all about your W and to talk a little bit about what Anubarak's W does is it gains it gives you a shield that blocks 328 damage. While you have that shield you gain 40 spell armor. Um, actually, I believe you have the 40 spell armor even if the shield breaks. So you get the 40 spell armor and the shield for three seconds. Then you can get a talent that increases that spell armor to 20, meaning that if you're ever going against a team that has like a Lunara or a Kael'thas, that is now 60 spell armor, reducing the damage dealt by 60%. You see that 60 spell armor, his W didn't even break the shield. Um, this build continues on with a lot of really cool things. So I'm going to lock this and we're going to go a little bit faster and I'll show you some of the cool things that it does. Uh, level four, you can get movement speed from this shield build. Uh, that gives you 30% increased movement speed for three seconds. That's the duration of the shield anyways. So, but it doesn't say for the duration of the shield, it says for three seconds. So in case your shield breaks, you still have the movement speed for three seconds. On to your level 7 is what makes this build even work, which is the reduced Hardened Carapace cooldown for every time you take uh, damage from an enemy ability. Meaning, if you're taking damage from a damage over time, if you're taking damage from a damage over time, you know what I mean? Or the damage over time from the uh, Ana. Any one of those damage over times from Ana, from Lunara, or from Kael'thas, you're going to be shaving off a second from your cooldown, and it goes up to three seconds on the cooldown. It's a six second cooldown. It lasts for three seconds, meaning that you can have a permanent uptime on your shield, a permanent uptime on 60 spell armor, and a permanent uptime on the extra movement speed. Not just that, but I'll talk about the spiky shield part when we get up to level 13. So. Uh, once again, Anubrak, I've been saying he's one of the strongest tanks in the game. This build right here is very situational. I guess it's not too situational, but there are times where it's way stronger than it should be. To the point that I have a feeling that it will get nerfed, because against certain teams, it's just a little too strong. And again, guys, I'm sitting at like a 70-80% to 80 win rate with uh, Anubrak, so... Uh, while I show these builds on a Nubarak, I'm just being honest. Like these things are pretty incredible. Now I'm not encouraging Blizzard to nerf this. I do think that this is already on their schedule. It's already something that they're looking at. Um, it's just a build that, while it's good, I think it's just a wee bit too good. And I still think the best way to nerf a Nubarak is leave all of his builds the same and just double the cooldown of Cocoon. Uh, but you can see again, like the bomb goes off. It's pretty easy for me to deal with. I can. Just get in the way, annoy the enemies, and we don't need to worry too heavily. It's not too hard for me to peel. Keep my shields going. And just get on their back line, tossing another shield out. And I have my E to escape at any point I need to escape. Uh, as we're getting into some of the later fights, you're going to notice that these talents synergize really, really well. And even if they turn off healing, you're still extremely scary. We don't need to take this fight any further, purely because uh, we've already lost the objective. We really don't scale that well until late. We have the Falstad who said that he doesn't really do much until 13. We have the Tracer who scales much better into the late game, uh, as well as the, the rest of our comps kind of reliant on having that Tracer. So I just continue going for wave clear here. I don't waste too much mana. I do kind of jump in, get some stuff done. I wish I would have backed here, but I wasn't able to back purely because uh, I had to, yeah, you can see, I, I decided to end up staying anyways. Um, I do have the lower cooldown now. So we're gonna turn off the fast forward so you can see how many Ws I get off during one of these fights. Um, <clears throat> We do have the, the fight kind of starting up a little bit mid lane first. And we 
it starts really awkward, honestly. I want to make sure that I can peel for my team. Uh, but at the same time, I want to zone off this person. So he puts that on me. One W, right? Already used. Two Ws. Three Ws. Four Ws. And I don't need to use this one. Because I'm already out of the fight. Four Ws. I was able to zone three people out of the team fight during that fight. Possibly even five Ws, depending on if you counted that first one before the fight really started. Uh, I do jump in here. Oh, no, I don't. Not yet. Uh, so once again, just watch. One W. And on to the second one. Second W. I do get a little bit of heals here. I got a shield there. Third W. I do die here, unfortunately. But um, we are able to take a decent chunk out of this fight. We are able to take out the Varian and should be able to grab the objective now. So I was able to distract the enemies long enough and get this uh, Illidan out of the fight long enough for us to win the objective. You get to see how the power of this build really goes when uh, I actually do have mana. Unfortunately, when you have no mana, there's only so much you can do. So on to the next one. You can see I just kind of jump in. I don't go too crazy into anything like this. Uh, miss a few things. Don't worry about it. I could actually cocoon if we wanted to go for anything there, but I don't think it's really worth it. <clears throat> So we just go in here, uh, and we have an objective spawning pretty soon. We can charge in if we want and go for a little bit more damage. Not a big deal. But again, guys, W. W. And W. It's like, if we wanted to. It's, it's just, it's incredible. So I have more mana here. I can always get healed up before this objective. So we do want to start making our way up there to do that. A cocoon is still being picked up. It's way too good to pass up. You cocoon someone at the start of a fight, jump in, there's nothing they can do about it. So right here, I reposition so that I can tank the majority of these minions and anyone can just channel off on the side. It's a strategy you can do on this map and something you definitely should try to do because the enemies won't expect you to grab this that early uh, because they're gonna expect you to clear all the minions first. <clears throat> we do win the first objective and and we are in a comp that scales really hard. So again, W, guys. And I've got my next W up. Oh, w again. And this one, I didn't get any cooldown reduction. But I also didn't take any damage. So I can still get into this fight whenever I want to. Stun two people there. I'm going to take a little bit of magic damage here. I took a step back, so I didn't take the, the spread the W. Which I could have done that anyways. One... Two, three, four, and five. You know what I mean? Like, there's five Ws right there. They just dove and they did everything. They honor grenaded the ancestral healing. They literally did everything to try to kill me that that fight, and they couldn't do it. I just did five quick Ws. I had the the healing, but this build comes online at level thirteen. And at 13, you're going to realize how scary this build can actually be. So far, I'm just tanky. I'm tanky, and I bring a lot of CC to the fights. But level 13, I start bringing some damage. More so than any of the other builds that Anubarak has. I would say his... If you go into the uh, Bed of Barbs and Acid Drench, it can be pretty strong. The problem is they keep nerfing the... Uh, is auto attack damage. So whenever they're nerfing his auto attack damage, it's nerfing the value of acid drench mandibles. So um, I, I do want to show that this build is probably higher in damage, especially if you're going against teams that can constantly reset your shield. So now we're going to be picking up the spiky shield. The spiky shield will do 133 damage to nearby enemies, double damage against heroes. So every three seconds, I'm going to be doing 266 damage to heroes. Doesn't seem like that much, but coming from a tank, it actually adds up really, really fast. Uh, against these minions, it's not too important, but uh, it does... I, I usually don't use it for damage on minions. You can see I'm saving most of my abilities, most of my mana. And we can go in and take a fight here if we want to. But honestly, I just want this camp. I get slept. I want to save my team, uh, but unfortunately, Falsehead's already dead. So again, Spike 1 was right there. And now I have the damage over time on me, and watch. I Spike... Oh, hold on. I can walk up. 
Oh, that's a really bad cocoon. I wonder if I did it just to save them from the dives? A really bad cocoon. Yeah, I must have done it just to get the Illidan from, from charging in. Though, it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I can charge in at any point and just start hitting them with all these spikes of damage. So watch this. I charge in, spike. And the spike did a big chunk. And watch, I'll spike him again. I hit him with bed of barbs. Boom, 277 damage from my spikes at there. And it's it's really easy to finish off. My hero damage is really strong now. I can chase if I want to, but it's not really worth it. Uh, but she gives me more movement speed as long as she just gives a damage over time without using a W. Uh, right here, once again, I'm going to pull all the minions over to one side. And then I'm going to let someone just channel if they want to channel. So now it's free to channel if they want to. And I'm saving my abilities. Unfortunately, I don't think he understands that you can do that. So he starts channeling near me and ends up taking the aggro off of one minion. If he would have channeled up here, he would have been able to channel for free. Um, and I ping a lot, but uh, no biggie. We are able to pick it up. I grab the, uh, the globe and the heal, and I'm ready to go again. And now we're scaling really hard. Now at level 16, the there is no W talent here. There's no spiky shield synergizing abilities here so i usually just pick up epicenter it allows me to have a larger impact radius and lowers the cooldown for the amount of heroes hit so if i jump in hit a bunch of heroes then i'll have another stun available pretty soon uh, i don't like the beetlejuice talent even in a beetle build just the fact that you have to hit heroes to spawn beetles is very bad and i find that reducing the spell power is okay and if you're going this build you're probably already even going against a lot of mages to begin with but I just like having the, the larger radius so that it's easier to make sure that you can hit things. Impact area is just so large, you can hit a ton of enemies with it. This fight right here, we're approaching level 16. Now watch this. I jump in. <clears throat> we start channeling a little bit. That was a pretty bad gust. Um, and I think we end up losing this fight purely because we used up all of our abilities. But again, one W is already used. Second W is... Uh, gonna be used here. I do cocoon try to zone people off so we can get the channel. I get another W So I'm at two right now Charging in I'm at three and I will die here because I'm slept so I can't get another one so three W's Unfortunately all this time we could have channeled but nobody's channeling So that's a little unfortunate. We'll fast forward through my death because we're not here to watch Everyone else play we're here to watch this build um and uh we've had a couple rocky fights but the game is not over and the build is not dead we charge in to save the uh the tracer make sure that we get some cc off get one w off we get another w off we walk back in we get another w off you know we just get another one off and you gotta remember not just are we doing damage with this not are we are we just getting survivability but we're also summoning a beetle every time so every time we're summoning these beetles that are doing more damage, we can charge in on their back line if we want to and take him out, or we can simply just play safe. And look at this. They keep going for the kills. I keep just pressing W. Another terrible cocoon. I don't know what I'm doing with these cocoons. I even wasted it before the seeds are spawning. Um, and we're going to have to give them a free objective, unfortunately. And we'll clear up from there. So now it's looking a little rocky. I, I need to start using my cocoons correctly, and in order to do that, I should be using a cocoon on something that they need, like their tank, and then we should charge in immediately into their backline and see if we can get a kill. So right here is kind of a an area where Lunara shouldn't be attacking me, because I can shield myself, survive her damage, and all she's doing is giving me more damage and more beetles that I can spawn. And again, W, uh, it's, I mean, I just spread it over. And that was like a nano boosted W. So you saw that did so much damage to that Tassadar. I believe I spread one more W onto him, but uh, look at that. That was from one Q that has uh, Ignite on. Insane amount of damage. This Kael'thas is doing so much. Uh, just need to step away from that, and then we can jump in. Looks like Falstad's, oh, I figured he was going to go down again. So right here, we should go in. We should pretty much just charge in, cocoon someone, and go for another kill. Look at this W right here. 
Watch this. Boom! Burst from that W. We do cocoon the Ana, so I'm just getting ready to use my stuns when she gets up. And then boom, fire one stun, my W, my E onto her again. Then we just follow her. Unfortunately, I did get slept, but we do have a tracer to clean this up. Boom. So that burst, it's such a surprising burst that no one's expecting from a new Brock. You think that a new Brock, after he uses his Q or his E, is that's going to be it. But the fact that he's able to throw out a good burst of almost 300 damage right whenever he uses his W is just crazy. So again, a little bit of burst they're not expecting. I mean, honestly, that was mainly the Tracer, but uh, showing off the build here. And we wipe their entire team, we grab up a camp, and we can start heading to end off the game if we want to. The great part is once you hit 20 with a Tassadar, this game's kind of over. So I helped in the early game to make sure that we could get to a late game. And then in the late game, <clears throat> I had a little bit of sustained damage. Certainly nothing crazy. I did out damage the Falstad. I did out damage the Illidan, um, which is pretty good. Uh, as far as the rest of it, Varian still out damage, but I will say that Varian with a shield breaker is always going to show up with a high score against something like a Tassadar, but uh, overall it was pretty solid. We do have a fight over a camp here, dive in, interrupt, interrupt again, use a W to get some burst off, I get woken up, I've got my W's to stay alive here, and a couple extra things, I do a rewind so that I can get an extra stun off. We get a nice little cocoon onto a target that was doing a lot of damage. We wait until she's about up, and we'll use an E to go in, stun her immediately, do the W for a little bit of burst, and one more Q to finish her off. Unfortunately, she went the predictable way, and I went the other way, and we should just be able to end off the game here now that we've gotten some, uh, some value. We can charge it on the Illidan, possibly get a stun, and another stun, kill him off with a W. And just rip this down. Now, the more damage over time they give me here, the more beetles I spawn, which means that the I will be able to do more. Um, what's it called? Uh, more more beetles that can tank the the points. But right here, we pretty much just want to take as much spell damage as we can. Uh, and this Ana, if she auto attacks me even once here, she's gonna give me so many beetles. But yeah, that's it, guys. That is the spiky beetle build. So one more time as we look over the talents that are picked up, you get the increased spell armor, you pick up the movement speed, you get the reduced cooldowns, you get the extra damage, double damage against heroes, 360 damage at level 21. Uh, epicenter to just knock up and lock down as many people as possible followed by rewind allows you to still charge in, you cocoon someone, charge in, hit a bunch of people. And this build works great against damage over times. So I would still recommend the Beetle uh, level 1 build at against certain other team comps. But when you're going against 2 or 3 damage over time heroes, this build is absolutely insane. So feel free to check out this build. Uh, try it out in game. If you're ever going against damage over times, do it. I have a small feeling that it will be nerfed. Do I think it deserves to be nerfed? No. I personally think that if they're going to nerf a Nubarak, they should double the cooldown of his ult, or at least bump it up to 100, maybe 110 seconds, uh, and then leave all the rest of them the same, because he's a fun hero to play. I think he's in a really good spot, but Cocoon is way too strong in the upper levels of play. Uh, and then that would also give the lowers of level play a, another ult that's still okay. So thank you guys all for watching and feel free to check out my other videos.